Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how I quilt on my little machine. I have my stitch length set at 2.5, my needle position's in the middle, and my attention is currently set at 4, but I will be double checking that. I do have my walking foot on, this is a must in my opinion, but you can do it without. Before I start quilting, I will do some test runs to make sure that my tension is correct, and then I'll make any adjustments that I need to to make sure that it looks nice. I'm just drawing a random wavy line as to where I want to start my quilting, and you want to make sure that you start off of your quilt top, so kind of start within the batting. That way if your thread nests, it's not going to be on your quilt and it just looks a lot nicer. Whenever you're using a walking foot, you want to go nice and slow because if you go too fast, your stitches aren't going to come out nice and even. And you want to make sure that you have your palms so that you're holding your fabric nice and taut and flat so that you don't end up with bunching and getting puckers in the back. I have made some larger quilts on this machine. I did a 70 by 90 twin size for my daughter's bed. And then I also did a 56 by 69 lap size for my mom. I'm going to speed up the video here because nobody wants to sit and watch me putter along slowly. This is a slow process, so you just need to be patient and take your time. And then when I'm coming to the edge of the quilt here, I am just going to make sure that I come off about an inch again. This is just so that I don't have any nesting or loose threads right on my quilt top. You don't want that. You can see my stitches here. You want to try to make sure that you get even stitches. I'm not going to lie, mine aren't always 100% perfect. And I did use a thread that would match my back so they wouldn't really show up. So I didn't want them to be very visible in the back. I mean, I guess it wouldn't really matter. It's the back, but... That's just what I wanted. Then I'm just gonna pull the quilt back and then I'm gonna start on my next row. What you can do is if you're doing like straight lines, you could just roll it up to push it through your throat. But because I'm going at an angle, it doesn't really work for me. So I'm just gonna like bunch it up, scrunch it through there. And anytime you're adjusting your quilt or moving it around, make sure your needle is in the down position so that your stitch line stays even and doesn't jump all over the place. And here I'm reaching the end of the first half of my quilt. Once I finish this side, then I'm going to spin my quilt around and then just do the same thing all the way along on the other side. This has been like an hour and a half worth of work. I would recommend taking breaks in between because you can get pretty sore sitting here. I usually take a break after every hour. That way I can give my shoulders and my arms a little bit of a rest and my hands because your hands do get pretty sore, especially if you're not wearing gloves. If you're not wearing gloves, the fabric is really slippery and it just makes it a lot harder. So I would recommend getting quilting gloves. It makes it a lot easier and it's a lot easier on your hands if you're wearing them. Trust me, I know. Another thing that would make this a lot easier was if I had an extension table so my surface would be a little bit bigger where I'm working. I definitely need to get one. And now I have half of the quilt done. I'll finish it up later. I just want to show you what it looks like. And then because I did my rows at an angle, I ended up having to go off of the top, but that's fine. This is just the way it's supposed to look. So you just want to kind of weave around and get the design that you want. And then this is how it looks in the back. You can't really see the stitch lines at all. I love how it turned out. Thank you for watching.